Success, we have unwrapped all the items for the Rad Pad. So we have this stuff that needs to be put throughout the Rad Pad. Um, and then we have beds that need to go up. But my first task for the morning is to do the refrigerator door because yes, we found an amazing red fridge, but to work in a kitchen, the flow is over here. So if you want to open the door of the fridge, you would have to like go way over here to get stuff. That would be ridiculous. I've seen some rentals do that and it's just a bummer. I, I feel for you. I have empathy because I bought in a fridge where you can't switch the door handle thinking that you could. And then it was like, what do we do? We live with the fridge with the wrong side until you can find a neighbor that'll trade you or something. So my first job is going to be to switch this over. Uh, then we have a functioning kitchen. Then we've got the induction burner that's going to go over here. Beautiful two burner right there, super nice. We got pots to hang, we got, uh, the chairs came out pretty cool. I really like them because they're kinda, they're like what I would have made if I made them. So I really like big bolts, um, you know, and kinda steampunk, uh, I keep using that word steampunk because I'm really into it. On, on the uh, AI app, I have a button and I press steampunk and it makes it look like nuts and bolts and stuff. Uh, but it's really more of like a hipster look, like a hipster slash Starbucks kind of vibe. Um, so chairs going awesome, all the stuff inside, we're going to put it out here and I'll show you how we do it all as we do it. Let's go. So now the fridge is functioning in this kitchen, so the door is now open easily so that you can get to the freezer and the refrigerator um, while working from this direction. So job one done. I think the next is a mirror in the bathroom. So first of all, where should this tall mirror go? Um, there's only one wall left, so it has to go on this wall. But on this wall, there's a sliding door that opens this way on the outside. So there's no room to put the mirror on the sliding door or the door would have to be out further than it already is. So it has to go on this wall. Um, we need to put a towel rack in here, a nice strong towel rack to put towels. So it's kind of saying this has to go over here. I really want it to go right here, but having the towel rack right when you walk walk in might be just too much. So I think the mirror is going to have to go here. And I'm even going to have to center it, even though there's shelves behind there, this is still plenty of room to check yourself out, make sure you're looking good before you start your day. Hmm? Mirror is up, three inches from here. Three inches on the bottom, looks fine, looks great. Good mirror, let's do the next thing. Don't know which one my favorite is, this beauty. It's called a cutter in Espanol, like a cutter, only you say cut. Um, so it has the fat blade, but it also has this little lock at the top. Um, and this lock makes it so you can like set it to where you want it and start cutting, but just twist the lock a little bit and it's super strong. Um, so this is one of my favorites, uh, but then there's this. The Milwaukee, she's a beauty. Little dangerous for somebody who doesn't know how to use it. But once you know how to use it, you flick it like that. And then to bring it closed again, you just kind of shut it right there. So open, uh, better with the finger. Boom, she's open. We're going on to the kitchen here. So we've got an induction cooker here, which is one of the biggest things in rentals is cleaning. And cleaning a gas stove is a pain in the gas. huh? Uh, cleaning this glass top is a joy. So I'm gonna open this up, set it up there, and I think we're gonna do like coffee machine, that sort of stuff, uh, rice pot, and then we do need a blender. We, yeah, and a blender all here, and we're gonna have to hook up power. So we're gonna see how we're gonna do that. Um, the countertops and the electricity were, were well thought out, but they need to be rethought out. So we're, we may have to move this box up and then uh, install this here so we can plug everything in or come up with another solution, but that's what we're doing right now. So just getting ready, uh, set up, rent ready. So everything Things easy to use and easy to clean. Whoosh. 
Let's do the shower curtain. So we got just a basic plastic shower curtain. Um, I like having the metal rods or metal clips. We'll see if these even fit. If they do, we'll use them for now and probably replace them with metal clips. Metal clips will rust, but they definitely last longer. Um, and they have little balls on them that make them slide quickly across the top. Let's see if these work. Swing and a miss. I knew it when I bought it. I didn't like it when I bought it. And I was like, eh, the color will work and it'll, it'll go. Let's just get it done. Wrong shower curtain, wrong length, wrong size. Everything about it um, is not correct. So I needed a 72 inch one. This is not 72 inches. And then I need the metal hooks because these hooks are going to be too small to go over the three quarter inch bar. That is good for pull ups without hitting your head on the fan. <sighs> Next up, we decided to go with the single use uh, shake to go blender. Uh, put it in place and see how it looks. All right, blender fits there perfectly. Great, next up is a rice cooker. Let's see how it all fits. So this is the rice cooker. Uh, pretty much everything we've chosen is from Pequeno Mundo because it's readily available and it's pretty high quality stuff and they always have more if something were to break. So we've got a, a pretty decent rice cooker there. So now you got your shake, you got your rice cooker. We got our stove over here and I think there's some more. I don't know what it Next is. Next up, we've got the coffee maker. One of the most important things in a rental unit. And what, what well, we've chosen this one from Pequeno Mundo because it's, um, it's a great coffee maker and they're readily available so we can replace them but this is one of the most important things for a rental unit is to have the coffee basket filter where you don't need paper filters because anything you can do to reduce the likelihood of getting a bad review on your Airbnb site is the best thing you can do and you cannot get a review saying there was coffee but there was no coffee filters because this has a built-in coffee. I've spent sleepless nights wondering what I can do so here come here have a look look over here this is I love this so this is the light switch for the uh, rope lights and then down here is a power bank so you can have more um, accessories in the kitchen on the island right I want the same thing right here now I've tried to find other places I could mount this right the right now I'm gonna just pull this table out just a couple inches so you can see um, right now the power cable uh, is right here which is great uh, if we wanted anything below we could put this below and then have all these wires go down there and if you want to plug like something else in here, like a waffle maker or something that you brought, or it's like, where do I plug it? Oh, I go underneath, I got wires, the problem. The right place for this is right here. It can't be right there touching the table because you're going to want to move that table in and out. It needs to be about that height in that wall. It can't go like on this one because it's too close to the water. So you don't want to have plugs right up in that water mix there. So it's got to go there. So for me to do this, and since we're doing it properly and we're making it repeatable for rad pad um there's a hole in the back of there that's been drilled out of you know three quarter inch hole and there's wires coming through that's where the armored cable is i'm going to take this apart and then i'm going to drill a hole up about two inches and then i'm going to move the wires inside and reconnect everything so that i can mount this right there and have it proper so that we can have all of our appliances hooked up there and if you have something extra you can just plug right in there so doing it right man doing it right let's so go we got the fuel 18 milwaukee drill um to drill our hole saws um when we assemble the rad pads like in the base of this the 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 main beam that goes across we have to put a hole there so the wire can come up and it comes up here um and it's coming out here so what i'm going to do is i'm going to drill another hole saw just a little bit above it so i can move this up about an inch um it's going to be tricky to hide this hole but i found out that these little our little m12 Milwaukee drill bit can do it. It fits the uh, hole saw and it has more than enough power. So this is a great tool for doing the job like one or two or, you know, maybe 10, but not for building rad pads where you're banging out like 50 or 60 holes, you know, top and bottom up all over the place. So we have the Fuel 18 uh, Milwaukee larger drill for that. And then we have the Trooper uh, big plug-in um, one for doing it when we're building multiple rad pads at the same time. But pretty amazing tool. Uh, if you don't have one of these is definitely worth making the investment. It's a it's an investment where it's an asset, not a liability. I call it a tool that you 
know is gonna break is a liability because it's costing you money. A tool that you are pretty sure is gonna make it a long time like this, I consider an asset um, because it actually, without it, I couldn't earn money. So this earns me money, asset, awesome. M12 Milwaukee. All right, I made two mistakes. First mistake was I took a small hole saw bit here and it didn't need to be as big as the LB. Over here, the the LB comes out and you can see it's it's thicker than, than the hole saw I made. Um, and because I thought I could just slide that wire up there and tighten it in, but obviously this has to go inside as well. So now I need the hole to be the same size as that. But the way a hole saw works is it has a pilot hole in the center of whatever you're trying to drill and that's the guide for the saw to cut it out. So you can't just put a bigger hole saw in there. You have to use a cone bit. The second mistake that I made was that the M12, which is great for drilling all kinds of things, holes, wood, screws, um, it, anything, you know, a little bit smaller. But we actually do need the M18 to be able to drill this hole. And especially because now I have to use a cone bit, whereas I would take the hole saw bit with the other hole saw pilot screw put it together um, and that's the correct size hole that I need but since I already made the small one I can't use this um, and I should have used this with the M18 right off the get-go but my brain wasn't working right so now I have to use this step bit to kind of pop 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 uh, get through big enough to be able to get the conduit through and in order to do that I tried with the M12 and it just doesn't have the, the guts to do it so this is Milwaukee's probably most powerful um, tool that they sell and this can do anything but but you have to have respect for it too, because if you use it for like hundreds of big hole saw bits, it's not that great for the machine. So this machine is used for when I've got like four or five that I gotta do and I don't wanna get an extension cord and set up the other drill. Uh, this works perfect. It also has, when you're doing a hole saw, if it grabs, it can tweak your arm or it can hit you or hurt you. So it comes with an attachment, um, which is pretty simple to set up. I'll show you how it works. Uh, one end goes through, it kind of grabs on here like this, and the other end goes, something like like this there we go and you just tighten this into place let me start it off right down like that tighten give me a second to get it set and should grab its little little spots there you go and you tighten that in like that and now when I'm drilling when it kicks I've got my hand on here and it's safe because if it if, when it grabs a hole saw especially when you're doing like a freaking like a four inch hole saw like one of the bigger guys like this right here when that thing grabs it can just snap your wrist man just like um, so you need something to hold on to to do it properly. So I'm gonna put it on just because I don't wanna get hurt. Getting hurt is so much slower than doing it the right way from the get-go. Same goes for like eye protection and ear protection, all that stuff. It's just faster to put it on. So I'll get this set up and then I'll drill a hole for you. So now I'm gonna try and get this in there and step bit it so you can see. But that step bit is pretty freaking dull because it's been used a lot. I've heard there's a way to sharpen them, so I haven't thrown it out yet, uh, but I'm gonna switch bits and go with uh, something a little newer. So this step bit, um, this one kind of does breaks at the most commonly used sizes, so like half inch and I think three quarter. Um, so we'll try this step bit and see how it does. The answer is much better. So the right tool, the right bit, the job gets done perfectly. All right, so there's always a little more than expected whenever doing anything. So now we've got the electrical outlet back in place and I've taken out the um, extension cord that was there for plugging in and we're gonna install power outlet. The power outlet is gonna be about almost exactly one inch above the counter. So that gives enough space to put a rag under there and keep it clean. Um, and also the table's gonna hook onto the wall so that it can be unhooked for cleaning so that cleaning is absolutely 
probably the most important part in running an Airbnb is how do people clean it? How quickly do they do it? How easy is it for them to do it? And how, uh, how good is the end result? So making sure that the table can move for them to clean under it is important. But we've also spaced the shelving on the table up high enough so that you can get your mop and broom under there without removing it. But we're giving them both options. So in order to mount this to the wall, I have to kind of take this whole thing apart, um, all the screws and everything, and then screw it into the three by three beam here, and then put it all back together and wire it together. And then it's done right. So another five minutes and I'll have her done right. I can't tell you how nice it was to have every right bit and right tool to pull that off. Uh, we've done it so many times with the wrong tools and just, just given her. And I know that may have taken some time, but I look at it like the difference between rad pad and building a custom home for somebody is building a customly is somewhat of a liability in that that was time spent on that job and that took away from the profit margin, especially when you have shareholders and whatnot. But when I look at it for rad pad, I said that was an investment in time which is somewhat of an asset because we now use that same measurement for the next one that we build and the next one and the next one. So it's all about getting it as good as progress, not perfection. We're not trying to get perfect, but we are trying to progress at every single thing we do. So knowing now the kitchen layout, what readily available counters are available here in Costa Rica versus Nicaragua, the heights, the minimum heights uh, without cutting them. I guess we could cut them, but that's just a whole nother, you know, it's not that efficient. So now we've got the um, power bar mounted here. It's strong as can be. It's done properly. You've got the light switch above. Uh, there's enough room to get under there for cleaning, so you're not going to have a cleaning problem. Um, just beautifully done, and that's that's the right way to do it. All right, so we're mounting these um, shampoo and conditioner dispenser in the shower. We're gonna put one here and one here. The reason that we're mounting these and having them is for efficiency in the changeover in long-term and short-term rental. So not only is it easy for the customer, but it's easy for the stocker cleaner to check if the shampoos are full. So we're gonna be able to have shampoo and conditioner rent ready in this rad pad in about 10 minutes. Good, and then so what we're about to go over is I made the largest mistake ever and that was I left with some dudes caulking love the guys but I left and now we're gonna try and salvage it or I'm gonna do whatever it takes to make it right so thank you Dennis <laughs> yeah and maybe God, next time just caulk before you do the shelves and stuff you know really to get in here and do a nice little work yeah um, yeah, there's a giant hole over here. Is that supposed to be there or no? Fuck no. Huh? No. You just cut this piece pretty short, huh? It's a swing and a miss. And you I fill that all in with silicone. Yeah. But, you know, it's still, this is going to be... Wow, there's a little pool up there. This is the end of the day. We're going to drive out to the next job site, which is up the river. And this is freaking awesome. We have to just pull over and have a look at this and just take a moment to remember that we're in Costa Rica. And this is why people come here because, because it's just so beautiful. There's so many plants, so many different types. The vibrations from the plants are just, it's intense. It is definitely real. The waterfall and the vibrations of these plants and the river behind us and the mountains and just the raw like power of Costa Rica. Um, yeah, super special place. So uh, stay tuned. Tomorrow we'll show you the new location. Uh, we're going to go to San Isidro, do some more shopping as normal. And then we're going to go out to the new job site and I'll show you how beautiful and special this next location is. Um, thanks for watching. Please like, share, subscribe and comment. And maybe, yeah, share this one with, hmm, 
Share this one with someone you haven't spoken to in more than a year that likes waterfalls.